look funny? Yes. Don't answer that. <laughs> Drummer, uh, my name is Jamie Wallum. Uh, I'm here behind my uh, brand new ANF drum company kit uh, on about my eighth or ninth show now uh, for Tears for Fears Tipping Point World Tour. And so uh, the guys from Modern Drummer are here, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this kit and this band and uh, anything else pertaining to uh, rodent and pest control. <laughs> And, uh, and soft drinks, so welcome. So, just for the record, I'm gonna get this out of the way because I must, I always do this, but the preface is these are prescription, <laughs> and it's to help keep these super bright white lights from uh, tattooing my brain. So anyways, I'm not trying to be cool, I'm just trying to see. And, uh, and I want, blind. Yeah, and I wanna introduce uh, Gooch Ibarra, William Ibarra, uh, collectively and universally known as Gooch Ibarra, who has been one of my longest uh, oldest and dearest friends, who is also uh, an incredible drummer, who's also uh, out with me and has been for a good 10, 10 years now, 11 years setting up and helping me get every kit that I've ever used on tour uh, in as much tip-top shape as I possibly could. So in talking about this kit, because it's a brand new setup for both of us, I wanted his uh, his expertise and guidance as well. And, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's kick it off. Okay, <laughs> Where do we 14 start? 14 by 24. Yeah, so let's go dimensions. Okay, so it's so ANF, okay. spun brass, it's actually called a royal brass. Correct. Right. So this the... is the royal brass line of drums made by ANF. They, they make uh, an array of metal drums. Um, they make a copper drum, they make a bronze drum, they make uh, this is a brass shell. You can see the welding lines here where they actually roll. Now this brass, you'd think in a heartbeat, God, brass, this thing must be just a big, giant, loud, clanky uh, piece of metal. But the unbelievable thing is that the way that this metal is treated, and because of the thinness of the shell, these shells are, I believe, about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Thinner than so a soup can. Thinner yeah. than a can. Um, if you were to take the heads off of this, so it was just, and the hardware, and it was just the shell, and you were to just, just lightly pressed, you could probably bend these things completely out of shape just with a minimal pressure. So they're very, very thin and very light, but the but the effect obviously is incredible. If I hit these, will that still translate a bit or can yeah. the effect on these drums automatically? This configuration, this is why I lean into Gooch for everything too, but for this configuration, I typically have been a coded ambassador guy for years. I just love the way they feel. I don't like a three ply head. I really like to let the drums uh, resonate and hopefully resonate as close to what they were designed to do as possible. But I do like the feel of a little bit of friction and just the weight of it. Um, so typically I do that, but going into this tour with these drums, not only because of the aesthetic and the vintage look of it, but because of what we we're going to go for sound-wise. Uh, Gooch recommended we try these fiber skin heads, and they're absolutely killing it. So a little bit thicker, uh, obviously gives it a bit more dark, uh, warmer kind of ground tone to it, but still plenty of sound. And uh, yeah, could yeah, be happy. The fiber skin line is basically the synthetic calf skin. So, and without the dealing with the weather problems, like it's humid here in Florida, it would have really messed up with calf heads, but yeah. these, these stay in tune and they, they tune up very easily. And so, yeah, he's using a, a 14 by 24 inch kick drum, which we don't have a, a that one we are using a PS3. Remote. Just because I still tend yeah. to play very, very heavy footed. Right. Definitely a, you come from a rock and roll, a hard rock background. Guys like Tommy Aldridge and Bonham and, and uh, Tommy Lee and just all the guys that really had a heavy duty right foot are, are my idols. So, I, you know, it's rare that you break a bass drum head, but you want to make sure you don't, obviously. So we go with the power stroke here. It seems to be, uh, it seems to be working great. Yeah, we do have a, a ambassador fiber skin on the mic side of the, of the kit. So. And I do want to give a shout out to Remo, who's been incredibly... Yeah, uh, Roger, Roger over at Remo's Remo been yeah. incredible in helping us uh, helping us get this together because with COVID and with production and with ordering and with uh, you know the business side of things, getting stuff 
supporters place and getting enough uh, it was a big a big deal for them to pull this together in as much time as they did so very grateful to them and couldn't be happier so that covers the heads as far as again let's go over the sizes. yeah so the kick drum is 14 by 24 standard short length kick drum with the 24 inch diameter very bonhamish you know um, early on he used the 24 but then obviously he's famous for the 26 but the 24 in this this configuration is really solid. It has a lot of tone and good projection. Um, then he's going with a, a eight by 12 rack tom. Uh, we also have a 13 by, a nine by 13 rack tom. That's a hybrid snare drum, but we use it as a, a tom as well. And we go back and forth. Um, and then a 16 by 16 uh, standard floor tom and a 16 by 18 floor tom and all of those so are square size here 16 by 16 yeah. and then this is still 16 deep and 18, yeah, 18 on the top, diameter so yeah. and on the bottom heads of the toms we're going with another thing that i like to try uh, i've been using them in the studio lately and that's called the skin tone head which is a really thin one ply head and it sounds really really great they look cool too can't see it right now but but it's just a vibe and and with the drums and being single lug and the way that the tubes are just makes the whole aesthetic look really great. And I think the look of these drums, again, ANF, I can't speak highly enough about this craftsmanship and the manufacturing of these drums. Uh, it took from the time Rami Anton and Chris Mead, um, by the time we got to the place of knowing what I wanted and deciding what I wanted, it took about seven months to get this from, from start to completion. Uh, number one, because it just takes that long, and number two, because uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's material, it takes time. So, incredible, incredible craftsmanship, very vintage looking, so the aesthetic thing is really important. Um, and they're just cannons. I'm using the ANF uh, 14 by 16 and a half yep. uh, main, as a main snare drum. I've got a, uh, a drum, drum Paradise, Paradise Black Lacky. Beauty prototype. Um, Made by Drum Paradise in Los Angeles, and had for, this one had for about eight, eight or nine Diecast tubes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> solid, solid backup should something happen to this and break it into tone. Um, I'll talk briefly about the cymbal setup and then the, uh, the electronics. I've been with Peisty the longest I've been with anybody. Kelly Peisty and Eric Peisty have been huge, huge supporters of my career and uh, my, my place in this band. And so for this tour in particular, I really wanted to try. Typically, I've always played signatures in 2002, so I wanted to do something different. And I got to basically hand pitch sounds uh, with some of the highest. Tim Tim Shadehe yeah. uh, from Heisen helped me, go, uh, basically helped me design what I wanted. So I'm using mostly 602 Modern Essentials, um, which are a little bit darker. Um, obviously, I'm trying to gear down a little bit this tour, too. I typically have been a, I'm a heavy hitter. Right? And I don't typically break a lot of symbols, but I run the risk of breaking them just because it's a bit hard, right? You gotta know how to hopefully hit them correctly to make them last. But I decided to go with again bigger symbols uh, that have usually a, a bit thinner and a bit darker tone. But the price is still a lot of projection and a lot of clarity. So uh, I've got a signature here. I've got an 18 inch full crash. I've got a master's dark crash here. So two 18s with a six inch splash. Um, I've got a 20-inch uh, china on this side, 2-inch china. I've got 602 modern essentials. Oh, sorry, yeah. 40 inch Four inch 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 there, yeah. yeah. 18 inch. I've got 22 inch crash here. Um, so what you can see is 602 inch splash here. I've got 15 uh, modern essentials. Yeah. This is a, a traditional. Yeah. yeah. That this, one was made one, specially for him. This one was made and took a while to get, but it's made especially for 20 inch. And then I've got a 26 inch giant beat drive. Which it normally like comes in 24 inch, but he has the gladiator shield there. Exactly. So I got the biggest one. Uh, did they make you 28? I don't know. <laughs> but it's got that whole, I call it the hippopotamus in the right? Well, um, I've got a prototype pair of 20 series 16 inch high. Yeah, I don't make those anymore. Definitely was going to be big and dark, uh, but still with a lot of top end clarity. Uh, a lot of high -end. So that's taken a little getting used to to have 16 inch hat hats as your main hat. But uh, so far it seems to be beautiful. And uh, I've got an inverted 
LP ice mill here that I've just had forever that I uh, just have. I think maybe once once a set, if I'm lucky, I get away with hitting it because everyone turns around like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> what was that? But it's, uh, Especially our it's tech pretty build. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as the electronics, why don't you... Yeah, to so the electronics, we just mentioned Bill. Bill Lanham is our main tech and he handles pretty much every instrument on this stage. And um, he put together a really nice electronic package for us. So we're using a Lisa strike pad and that has all of the sounds from the record literally programmed in here. And, and then we're using three strike 10 pads, 10 inch pads, and then a uh, rolling kick pedal down at the bottom there. So it's got a DW pedal with the pet, with the actual meter inverted so it comes down and then it's a, uh, KD7 KD7 That's just so you can use a regular pedal. Exactly. Otherwise, you have to use the. So, and that's I use that for two or three songs where I sample a kick drum from here that again is very specific to the record. So again, all the sounds in here that I am triggering come straight off, straight off the master recordings. Our, our playback, Steven, our engineer play, playback engineer, he actually controls all of the changes into the pad so jamie doesn't have to do anything yeah all i don't have to manually so again her song the song banks change when the song when the song is changing the playback will kick back from playback yeah. so that works out great oh and all we can forget vader yeah i'm just gonna say <laughs> lastly obviously um interestingly enough i i fully support and couldn't be happier to be a part of the vader drumstick family which uh chad brandolini over there is taking incredibly amazing care of me since I joined the family and the reason I really loved Vader was because I was having trouble with most other sticks which I've tried many of them but uh, I was getting a lot of blisters obviously people could say okay well, that's probably in your technique or in how you're playing it very well could be but point being uh, as soon as I felt these sticks that they make which are called nudes so they have absolutely no lacquer on them they're uh, they're, they're natural finished sand just all natural um, I just fell in love, and I used them, and I and I played a couple shows with a couple pairs that Chad gave me to try out, and I didn't have one single, one single twist or one single cut. So there's something about the way my hands and my body reacts to this stick that I've not had a single blister. I mean, I would have to soak my hands <laughs> after a show because I'd have ripped open blisters that were just bleeding and throbbing. You could see the pink, you know, all that just nightmare drummers go through. And I have not, that has not happened one time since I've been using these sticks, so I couldn't be happier. Um, and then his secret weapon, which he's sitting on, is his Porters and Davies, something we call a butt thumper, but it, it, it basically a subwoofer it's called that's the in, his, yeah. in his seat. And we control the low end and coming out of his kick drum mainly. So because um, everything's on in ears and it's hard to get that much low end into your, your uh, molded in ears, you still get a lot of beautiful mid range and beautiful, and you still get the the sound of it, but you don't get the feel like you do when you have in the old days when you had wedges and you can really feel the kick drum. So this literally, the, sub, the, the low end of the kick drum microphone is is pumped into here and when you hit the kick shakes. drum, not only do you feel it, but it shakes. So you literally feel this. So much so that it's it's a complete double-edged sword because when you, when if, if something were to happen and it were to go out or we forget to turn it on or something like that, Instantly when we play within the first 10 seconds, I can feel the th like it's it's like the bottom is not there Right, yeah. so it's a super super amazingly integral and important part of uh, Of the setup and the sound because it's all about how it feels right It's got to feel right and got to sound right and here here in order for me to be able to play and, and Drive hopefully drive the, the bus as accurately as possible. So uh, that about does it for the gear. Uh, couldn't be happier. We're about, like I said, about eight or nine shows in, so I think about a 37 to stop yeah. tour we've got. We've been out, it's all in the States. Uh, first half is all in the States, and then we fly over and do about five weeks in the UK. So, um, super excited, super pumped. It's a, it's a big, it's a new world for me and a, and a really new setup. So every night, I'm, by no means am I uh, on autopilot yet. And I hope to never be because I like having to be a little scared, be a little intimidated, and have to sort of get on top of it. It's like riding a riding a big horse, right? That I don't have enough control over yet. So, um, yeah, I'm ecstatic. And, yeah, the kit's really been great. It's been translating really great. Even from the first day we took it out of the boxes, yeah, literally we just literally took it and out again, of the boxes, put it up, and it was sounding. Yeah. Orders of all and Kurt Smith, who obviously you know, are, are the 
principles here in the band are very particular. And I think from the very first time I we laid into the first song on, on this kit, they were they were completely impressed. And, and Kurt Smith said it's the most beautiful drum kit. He wants it as a tour. piece. He wants it as a piece of art in his house <laughs> when this tour is done. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Well, that's awesome. And yeah. why don't you take us out with the uh, the world's most famous drum beat? on the world's most beautiful kit. Okay, <laughs> so that I get asked about all the time. Uh, and yeah, we're making way here for garbage. Come on, Butch Biggs, one of my idols. I gotta mention that. It's one of the most incredible things I get to do about the plane is I get to talk and watch and just soak in everything from Butch Biggs. It's incredible. But I think you're talking about Rule the World, which I think so. uh, I'll give that a beat here for a minute. Hey, Ricky, I'm gonna play for 10 seconds and then I'm done. Yep. Thank you, guys. Yep. Uh, okay, so let me see if I... same time deceptively uh, tricky because you, there's a fine line between autopilot and thinking about it too much, right? But again, it's just a shuffle. opportunity to uh, talk about these drums ANF out of Austin Texas incredible stuff please check out their website uh, I see again Lisa's uh, fader like I'm just I couldn't I, I'm, I'm blown away I'm blown away I couldn't be happier I'm like a kid in a candy store so. <laughs> thank you guys so much thanks for joining me and letting me geek out with you see you everybody yeah. thank you <laughs>